Hello 8th graders, in this IXL video we're taking a look at assignment F4 which is called exponents with negative bases. So now we're moving forward in our exponent work and they're going to put some kind of negative symbol involved with the base term. And there is a very important distinction here that we're going to make in the notes about whether or not the negative base term has parentheses around it. The first example, this is literally pronounced as negative 3 squared. When we see parentheses around the negative 3, it says the base term is the negative 3, and there's going to be two copies of that negative 3 multiplied together. And it's important to remember that a negative times a negative creates a positive answer. But if there's a negative symbol and no parentheses around that base term, the base is really just the 3. And this is saying the opposite of 3 squared. Order of operations is really telling us we need to apply the exponent to the base of positive 3 and then we take the opposite of whatever the answer is. So this says negative 3 squared and this says the opposite of 3 squared. And so for our first example here they're giving us the opposite of 4 squared. That negative 4 is not in parentheses so this says the opposite of whatever 4 squared is. So we'll go ahead and draw some notes out here. And this is really saying, one second, this is saying the opposite of 4 times 4, or the opposite of 4 squared. And if 4 times 4 gives us 16, the opposite of 4 squared is going to give us negative 16. So here, we did 4 squared first, and then we applied the negative sign because it said to do the opposite of 4 squared. The next problem is a little bit different. Now we see parentheses around the negative symbol. The base term is now a negative base. That's what the parentheses are telling us. And this is saying quite literally take negative 2 and cube it or multiply three copies of negative 2 together. And I think about the negative symbols first. I know a negative times a negative is a positive. But a positive times a negative is going to create a negative answer. So I know I'm going to get a negative answer when I have three negative terms multiplied together. And 2 times 2 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. So that helps me know that negative 2 cubed, or negative 2 raised to the third power, is going to give me a negative answer, specifically negative 8. Now the next problem that we have here says to us the opposite of 3 cubed. So we're not going to be doing a negative 3 multiplied together three times. We're doing the opposite of 3 cubed. That's literally what this says. Do 3 cubed and then take the opposite. And I know that 3 cubed, 3 times 3 times 3 makes 27. So this is saying just take the opposite of 27. So I'm going to put that 27 there, but i got to remember this is the opposite of 3 cubed, or negative 27. Now for our next example here, we see the opposite of 3 squared. So this says to take the opposite or the negative version of whatever 3 squared or 3 times 3 will give you. And if 3 times 3 gives us 9, then we know the opposite of 3 squared is going to be, quite simply, negative 9. one times one or one squared is one here we're just going to take the opposite which is negative one I'm trying to see if they ever give us a positive answer here four cubed is sixty four the opposite of four cubed would be negative sixty four and it looks like they keep giving us negative answers but there is a possibility they do a negative number squared here we see the opposite of three to the power is zero this brings up an important rule anything to the power of zero is one so in this case, the opposite of 3 to the power of 0 would be negative 1. And I'm just looking for an example of one that might actually have a positive answer. Maybe we're not going to run into any. Negative 4 to the power of 1 is still going to be negative 4. And 
and it looks like I'm surprised by this, but maybe IXL did not do a good job of providing many ones that would get you to a positive answer here. I'm going to just show a few more, but at this point you could probably stop watching and start IXL on your own. Well, here's a positive answer, our first example. Anything to the power of 0 is always going to be 1. So in this case, negative 2 to the power of 0, the base is negative 2. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, that negative sign has already been taken care of, so this is a positive answer. Anything to the power of 0 is 1, here's another positive answer, and we're just trying to see if the challenge zone gets more difficult, but again, you could stop watching this video. And I'm very surprised that IXL hasn't given us many that work out to become a positive answer, and that's the only reason I'm flying through a bunch of them. Looks like the only time it provided powers of zero. All right, here's what I did want to show you since IXL doesn't show us. If they had given us negative 10 squared, even though we have a negative base term there, we would end up doing a negative times a negative. And negative 10 multiplied with negative 10 would make positive 100. And my guess is, maybe it was weird for me, but some of you might see positive answers sometimes whenever we have a negative base term but an even power. You do end up getting a positive answer because a negative times a negative becomes a positive. In this case, we're going to get another negative answer because it looks like IXO gives tons of examples that are all negative answers. But we wanted to at least show you one example that might end up at positive answers even if the base is negative in the beginning. Thanks for watching to the end of the video. Keep up the great work, and we'll see you at F5.